Uh, Financial Phil joins us via telephone. Good morning, Philly. Good morning, guys. How are you all? Good. How, how's your yard of clover doing during these rains, Phil? You, listen, you stop the yard saying <laughs> my yard is as green as green can be. I didn't have to throw down any seed. I didn't put that poison on it. It's just looking green and happy. And I did mow my lawn on uh, – when, when did I mow my lawn? Thursday. Yeah, I mowed it Thursday. Oh, that's, that's the day I usually mow mine during uh, high school football season. And I, I, again, passed on that. So we'll see what happens when I get to it this Thursday. Yard shaming. You never stop with the yard shaming. You I, haven't even <laughs> seen my lawn. I don't even – why is it yard shaming to state facts? If I you said, don't know that it's a fact. You've never seen I, – I mentioned one time, Bill, one time at 6.30 in the morning – that I had some clover, and he's been shaming me since. And that was your mistake, Phil. Never give Rob a, a, a an opening because he'll he has. I mean, a, he he went on like he he questioned my manhood. No, he called me a bad neighbor. <laughs> no, what is a man if not with clover in his yard? No, well, true. I yeah. just said I have some clover. That's all I said was I have some clover. All right, I, I guess that's kind of all true now that I think about it, Phil. Since you put it that yeah. way, I guess yeah, I did do yeah, all those you're things. So offended. You were so offended when I said, no, I didn't say that. No. And you're like, oh, yeah. yeah well, I, I guess I did. It. Yeah. Well, you know, I did say it. And, you know, at, at the time I meant it, Phil. And I want you to know that uh, a couple months later, I still mean it. Yeah. It doesn't feel bad at all, Phil. No. No. I, I had a clover in my yard. I've never heard the end of it. A it clover. Looks, it, is, it is green as it can be right now. All right, Phil, I'm going to blow your mind now. Wait, what do you hear this? Because Dylan's listening. I want him to hear this, too. What uh, Man, what do you think? It, it's, it, it, Phil's Sunday was rough enough. You're going to make him start Monday morning like this, too? <laughs> Here, I'm here's you. my prediction. Ravens, Commanders, Super Bowl. That, that's, oh, I'm, 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 that's my prediction right now, Phil. Ravens, Commanders, Super Bowl. Well, it's a good pre- prediction there, Steeler fan. You know, I have to give Dylan a lot of credit because the last three weeks I have been calling in early – gloating (laughs) this morning i thought oh man i bet dylan's gonna be there and he's just gonna give me fits and you know he's just real gracious he dylan is a good man he he could have rubbed that in my face and he didn't and so i went on complaining about you actually (laughs) here you got two stiller fans and for the better part of two hours of that game rob and i were arguing about why they stink no that's not true so you it were, is true. No, you, you, you were, were blaming you, it on the receivers. No, I had no. excuses. They're hurt. I had excuses. And then you, you were, I mean, I was, talking you d- I was talking you down from the cliff, man. You were ready to jump off a cliff. It's one game. <laughs> that's, that's the thing about football. You, if you play bad one Sunday, the fan base wants everybody fired. They're ready to jump off the bandwagon and, and give up on the team. Yeah. If you win, it's like, man, we're going to win the Super fired. Bowl. And who's no, a, no, no. I don't want any. I didn't say I you did. To beat I wasn't implying you they did. Should beat. They should beat. I want them to beat the teams that they should beat. That's about it. Beat the teams that you should beat. And that team, they should have beaten. I don't and know. I, no. When you look no, at our boys. that that Steeler team yesterday was pretty. I'm um, pretty banged up team. I mean, they're they're down. To, they're playing like their ninth offensive lineman right now. They're. They're they're True. they're missing a lot of people. I mean, you, and the the, the line that the line that was out there, Phil, was four first and second year guys, and Dan Moore, also, who is a mid round draft uh, pick, and is like twenty six. They were also all highly drafted except for Anderson, who was who started up until last. All week. right, but there's still a learning curve in the NFL. It's a young, yeah, you especially on the. You were an it offensive lineman, play. Phil. You know all about cohesion. You got to have time to play together first. You know what? The first game I ever played may have been the best I ever. <laughs> <laughs> it feels just in a mood this morning, that. man. Yeah. You're, just, you're just in a mood when the Steelers lose. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, Phil, who's the quarterback yesterday for the Colts? For the oh my god, <laughs> Justin Flacco or Justin Flacco? Justin Flacco. Joe Flacco of all people, of all people. Richardson gets hurt, and here comes like oh my gosh, here's Joe Flacco. And he didn't like light the world on fire, but every time it was third and nine, there he goes sitting back there. Joe Flacco, all fifty years old of him or whatever. And he all is, all that good dark. all that good Ravens training that he had as well. So I guess he's yes, battle tested. I mean, he's got years of experience throwing against the Steelers, and I mean, 
and that made it hurt a little bit more. I mean, well, you just follow us around like the backup quarterback for whoever we play. <laughs> <laughs> week to week. He'll be in Dallas next That's week. A great bit. Yeah, yeah, he'll be backup for Dallas next week. Yeah, that would be a great bit, wouldn't it? I think that uh, Austin, the Steelers' defensive coordinator, made a tactical error in not blitzing Flacco. He just sat back, rushed the minimum number, and tried to play a zone against him, and he just picked them apart. Well, he, the guy's he immobile. Did, but, He's 39 years old. You've got to put pressure on him. You would, you, would also, you would also hope, and I like T.J. Watt, but you know what I hear every week how great T.J. Watt is. Oh, how geez, great listen, he is. you're turning against T.J. Watt now. <laughs> No, no, just where's he at? I mean, if you want to get all the flowers, I mean, you got to get to blame, too. Where's T.J. White yesterday? He got no pressure. I, I don't remember seeing him at all. I'm going to start calling you. Silly kick I'm going to call did. you Foul McCoy instead of Phil McCoy. You're just in a foul <laughs> mood today. You're turning on T.J. Watt. I know, it, I know it's bad when you're turning on T.J. Watt, man. Pressure. You're big play T.J. Watt, man. I mean, just let him march down the field where you at. And uh, you were killing poor Cam Hayward because he didn't get the quarterback. I wouldn't kill him. was there. Cam had a chance. He, to, he had a chance to sack Flacco and create a, a third and long, and, for, and and he fell off of him. He, he had him wrapped well, up, and he fell off of him. Strength. Joe but, Flacco's got old man strength. Cam Hayward's three hundred twenty pounds. He should. There's no way he's got Joe Flacco wrapped up. There's no way he just fall off of him. Joe, old, old man strength. Joe Flacco's got it. <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> Are you getting happier now? What do you think? Ravens, well, Commanders, Super Bowl. Uh, two, two strong performances you know yesterday what? by both teams. Yeah, I know that that and that was like insult to injury. The Ravens beat de- demolished the Bills last night, and I knew my friend who never texts me unless <laughs> Washington wins. I got a text from him. I didn't see it until later, and I knew I was like, oh, I know what happened now. He was, Butch texted me, so it was it was a bad football day. Bad football day. The uh, will be sweet. It, it'll get better, Phil. I think the Steelers play the Cowboys next. Yes, Sunday night. You want to, you want you want to win one game in the year. You want to make sure it's you beat the Cowboys. No, uh, if they're, they're going to win, they need to win three. They need to beat the Ravens twice, and for Pete's sake, they cannot lose to the Commanders. If they lose to the <laughs> Commanders, they beat the Ravens twice. <laughs> Yeah, they always beat the Ravens twice. Look at the history. They always beat the Ravens twice. But if they lose to the Commanders, I'm out the next day. You won't be able to face Colin if they lose to the Commanders. No, me and Colin get in a fight. I I think the the NFL, it's never been watched by more people in its history. And it it has legislated itself into some of the most unwatchable football ever because of the officials. And it's not their fault. It's the rules that everybody has passed. Yeah, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. Like the hit with Minka Fitzpatrick, I knew that that was going to be called, and there was nothing he could do about it. And, yeah, I agree. And there was a roughing the passer against Justin Fields. It was not roughing the passer. He sacked him. Yeah. That was it. He tackled him. And, and, and they, yeah, it, it, it gets a little old. I understand why they do yeah. it, but it does get a little well, bit Well, they, they make these rules where they expect people to defy the laws of gravity – like if you're tackling the quarterback and, and quarterbacks in the NFL aren't little, how are, how do you not land on the quarterback? What are you supposed to do when you tackle a guy? Are you how are you how do you suspend the laws of gravity while you're tackling a person? Especially a running quarterback. Yeah. So you got you got a quarterback to take off and run at any time. You're not allowed to hit him until he crosses the line. Yeah, I get it. And when they called that on, I was ashamed. I was like, that's shameful. That, that I don't. It's it's too. I get it. They're trying to protect some of these guys, but you know you, get, you can't you can't grab them by the back of the shirt. There's no blindside blocks anymore. So if someone's got to be looking at you. You got to give them a heads up before you block them. <laughs> I, you know some of those things. It's. I mean I get it, but they also they're highly compensated, and injuries are a part of it. And they all know it. But some of those uh, some of those calls and it's the rules. It's not the referee's fault. It's it's just the rules. And I'm I'm with you. Sometimes it's unwatchable. I don't know from play to play what's legal. You know, it's a solid hit, but well, he was a and none of that stuff applies to running backs. None of it. You can just maul a running back. Nobody cares. <laughs> it's a receiver or a quarterback, you can't do that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, Phil. Good morning, Phil. <laughs> I like Cranky Phil. Cranky <laughs> Phil is funny. I like Cranky Phil. It's partly 
your fault. I wouldn't have been so bad yesterday if it wasn't for your – I should send in these, this text thread that we've got between I, the two of us. I was calm. I, I, I was being rational. You, you were you, you were, were calmly just, messing with me. I was, it didn't matter what I said. If I was like, oh, that guy's terrible. That's no, not him. It's someone else. It's like uh, me and Rob arguing about why they stink. I was, I was antagonizing you, and I, I really was. And you were, you were taking the bait, dude. Grass shame me, antagonizing me while our team is losing. I don't know what I'm doing here. It's one out of 17 games, man. It'll be. It's gonna Let's be okay. Let's talk about finances. Let's uh, get on something. Last last trading day of September. September yes. hadn't been a positive month since 2019, but I think we've got a chance at one uh, if we can finish off today strong. Yeah, some good news, some sunshine. If we just hold on today. Now it's been a good month. September's been a good month overall. But not so good where one terrible day couldn't ruin it all. I don't see anything in the cards that could cause that terrible day. And as we talked about this morning, we're saying I know everybody, including myself, is tired of hearing about inflation, jobs report, and the Federal Reserve. But the fact of the matter is that is what is driving our markets. Now, the focus has shifted some, and we'll get the uh, employment report on Friday, so the September jobs report is of uber importance right now because we need to see a a job report that may show cooling. That's okay if it's cooling, but it can't be drastically worse than what it was the past month if we want to hang on to that good September, simply because on the other end of falling inflation, our next worry is recession. And if we get a, a, an employment report that is too bad, then recession fears will come in. But if it's cooling, then it supports the Federal Reserve rate cuts. It supports the half a percent that we just did and maybe another half a percent before the before the end of 2024. So we continue to walk that tightrope in a, a, a very important labor report on Friday. Now, Phil, I was looking at my savings account rate. I have Capital One. Okay. So I'm not sure when they cut the first time, but initially when I opened the account a year ago, it was 4.35%. About, I don't know, maybe six, eight months ago, they cut it to 4.25%. And now it is at 4.10% after the latest Fed rate cut. As they continue cutting rates, that also means savings accounts rates, CD rates, those sorts of things will drop as well. Yes, they will. And the, the risk-free rate of return is what we like to call those. And so, when, when, so you have cash deposits, whether it's in... A, a savings that earned, earns interest, and those normally change weekly and typically. Not Maybe I don't know about Capital One, but they typically change on a certain day during the week. And there's been a steady decline on anticipation that there's rate cuts coming. And, of course, we just got the first one. But we are in a strange period right now, and it's been like this for about a year. But the longer the – when I say time deposits, I mean those that you'll have a surrender towards, like CDs. If I put it in for three months, six months, nine months, a year, if I access those funds before the end of that time period, then I've got some sort of penalty to pay. Those time deposits will most likely be more drastic than the weekly or the daily rates that you would get with savings accounts simply because they don't want to get locked in. I don't want to get locked into paying someone 4.5% and then the Federal Reserve comes right around and cuts rates yet again and and i'm i'm in these longer term deposits or i'm paying an interest rate that i'm not able to to obtain myself so you, you we will probably for the remainder of the year and most likely for 2025 we'll start to see those time deposit rates continually fall so that's the bad news with falling interest rates is those cash savings won't get what they were getting before but we still maintain in the long run, maybe not in the short period, but in the long run, risk-free rate of return will not outpace inflation. So it is still a safe way to lose money or lose purchasing power in the long run. But uh, and, and that didn't change when even when your rates were five and six percent, you were still safely losing purchasing power depending on how long you put it in there. But a lot of cash savers won't be so happy with the Federal Reserve cutting rates. Talking about the Fed, uh, Phil, uh, Jerome Powell has recently said it's time for recalibration of policy. Uh, what does he mean by that? He's simply changing from a, a, a tightening policy 
or a higher for longer. Remember at, when they were raising rates and then they paused. They did no more uh, rate increases. And so our, our policy, our Fed policy, was tightening the money supply. And now the change in policy is to loosen it. So what he said following that was that in a vacuum, we still have a healthy labor market. And what I mean by in a vacuum is just a snapshot. If you just said, hey, this is our unemployment rate, I think it's at about 4.2%. And these are jobless claims and so forth. In a vacuum, without seeing what it was prior to that, that is a healthy, acceptable number. So when they cut rates, he says, hey, we need to change the policy because we want to keep the labor market healthy as it is in the vacuum. Now, if you look at it in comparison to what it was maybe at the beginning of the year, where the unemployment number has has trickled up every time they run this report, it, it, its trend has been higher and higher and higher, but in a vacuum, it's still healthy. The un- unemployment claims are still healthy in a vacuum, but they're getting worse at each point. That's why they felt comfortable to go ahead and start cutting rates, even though that inflation target, the trend is that the inflation is coming down to that 2%, but it's not there yet. So they're hoping the momentum from the inflation will continue down, and now they need to start working on the other side of the mandate, which is the employment side of their mandate. And that's what he meant by switching policy, a looser money policy than what we had. The more pro- the sectors, the more profitable sectors, have they ch- are they changing now, Phil, or you stay with the ones that have been consistently uh, uh, outperforming the last few months? Oh, that's a great acknowledgement, Bill. It, it it has changed somewhat. So if we look at the first quarter of 2024 compared to now, although technology, you know, last month Nasdaq outperformed everything else, but there there has been a broadening of the market, meaning. It's not as top-heavy, and that seen as healthy, not as top-heavy as what it was in the first quarter. In the first quarter, it was mainly just a handful of companies that were doing extremely well that was pulling. Remember NVIDIA, all the talk we did about NVIDIA, that was pulling everything with it. And it, it, so there was almost as many losers as there were gainers on the S&P, but because technology and the artificial uh, – intelligence companies had done so well it pulled the entire indice up so they're still doing okay but there's been a broadening everything else is doing a little bit better too and that seems as healthy we're at a pretty good point right now in our overall markets one because of the broadening now if you had a concentration in say just nvidia over the last couple months you wouldn't be as happy as everyone else you'd still be happy but just not as happy as everyone else but if if you had a diversified portfolio you've probably seen a boost that you didn't get at the beginning of the year. You mentioned AI, and there's been a lot of uh, uh, visibility, a lot of talk about AI, uh, obviously of what it can do, but now there's uh, talk about the alarms associated with AI that's uh, under that's not under control. Uh, are there, is there a, an, a investment opportunity for a sector that would look at the uh, the control or the monitoring or the uh, or the reducing the impact of AI? I think there is, but it's the same ones that were there before with cybersecurity and, and and those companies that really dive into that. There there is a piece of that's going to lift everyone. I was reading something uh, not too long ago about how banks were getting boosted by artificial intelligence, and I read it. And I didn't comprehend it. I'm thinking to myself, how are banks getting a boost from this? But I read it, and I read it again, still didn't comprehend it. But there's a lot of branches, and that's what we're talking about with the cybersecurity or the let's fix some of the problems that this new technology brings with it. And, you know, we've talked about the the, uh, security issues with clients and being able to mimic people's uh, uh, voices and their and their. And, and their mannerisms when they speak and so forth to kind of fool you over the phone. But there, there's so many different ways that artificial intelligence can bring about problems. And there, and there is a, a piece that can be said for cybersecurity companies that would benefit from finding a, a solution to that problem. The, there is some talk that the, uh, uh, the shipyard, or not shipyard, but the ports may go on, the dock workers may go on strike uh, all the way from the Gulf of Mexico up through, uh, uh, through uh, Boston. Uh, that's obviously going to have an impact, and it obviously will depend upon how long the strike's in place. But how quickly could the market feel the impact of the strike should it take place? 
I think the market would feel an impact bill before it would actually have an impact over fear. Our markets are reactionary to things like that, so we, it would try to anticipate that there could be an inflation problem. And man, if I'm not going to take this right back to the Federal Reserve, but if we had a, a ongoing strike like that, that would cause a supply crunch, which would in, in turn uh, be an inflationary pressure, a strong inflationary pressure with the supply chain, then that could uh, and, and it could cause the Federal Reserve to slow down with their loosening policy and decreasing rates because of what it could do to inflation. And our markets would act much quicker before it actually would even happen. So you could see uh, on a daily basis as you hear talks or negotiations about that strike, you can see the market swing one way or the other before something even happens. So, yeah, it would happen sooner in the market than what it would in the real world. Bill, you happier now? I am happier now. We've got to talk about something that, that I have more knowledge about than football. Even though I've played football and I'm an avid football fan, I did know, though, I did I did warn that these are the games that the Steelers would lose. I think that's why it made me so angry on top of it because I kind of knew it was coming. It's a road game in the NFL, you know. They're 2-1 and one on the road this year. Three of the first four have been on the I road. I don't care that's where they're good. playing. Why does it matter where they're playing? It's the same size field. and. Sometimes I don't know. It's just the injuries and where you're playing and the weather. Everybody's playing and on the same on the same playing field. Road road just games are harder easy. to win, Phil. Home field advantage well, is I real, mean, man. You got to travel, but you're still playing on a hundred yard football field. Oh, these guys are professional. You tell me if you took me out of my office on twelve seventy Winchester Avenue, I wouldn't be able to give financial advice. Come on, they should be able to play just the same on the road. Well, what if I took you someplace where 70,000 people were screaming at you the entire time about your financial advice? That might affect. I would focus more heavily on what I was doing <laughs> and, and persevere. <laughs> All right, what, if you were, what if you were also injured at the time, but you still had to give financial advice while 70,000 people if, were screaming if, at you? If, if, and if, it was your first year. It was your first year on the job, and you were if, only in, in month number two. Planner was injured too. I wouldn't use it as an excuse. Everybody's injured. Those guys are running into each other constantly. It's part of the game. That's why you have a big roster. You got to play through those. Their quarterback was hurt. They brought in an old man. <laughs> an old man quarterback. They played through their injuries. <laughs> All right, man. That's cool. All right, Phil. Where can people go to get more financial <laughs> advice from the injured Foul McCoy? <laughs> You can reach us at 304-263-4343 or stop by and see us at 1270 Winchester Avenue or Ryer Marksburg. Thank you, Phil. Have a great day, sir.